today's a rig build. South African fishing has influenced my fishing a great deal. And it added some vibrance to it. And I want to share that with you. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. I don't care. <laughs> this is the video today. And uh, today's rig is going to be the up and over ring rig. That's what it's going to be. And first of all, I'm going to start off by tying a typical South African big game rig. They have two categories in South Africa. They got edibles and they got non-edibles. And this rig can be used for either side. It just matters the size of the hook and the diameter of the line and that kind of thing, more or less. And the use of a dingle dangle or what I call a hair. In the beginning, I called it a hair so people could more easily digest the idea of it. The first rig I'm going to build today is going to be just a typical South African rig for either J-hooks or circles. You can fish J's with a dingle dangle or you can fish a circle the same way. So the first rig is going to be a South African rig. I've got it halfway built already because it is vividly simple. And the thing is with simple rigs is they work really well and that's what I like about it. Of course I had to get involved and overcomplicate the whole thing because it wasn't doing some of the things I like in a rig which is keep the lead weight up out of the way. But once you see the South African rig you can decide for yourself whether you think what I've done to it is necessary or unnecessary and I'll give arguments for it. So first of all South African rig. So these are the components you're going to need to tie the South African rig. That's it there. One pulley bead. We, we, we put them on as, as they go on, right? One swivel, one pulley bead, one lead link, one hook, and one dingle dangle. Different choices of hooks, that's it. Lovely jubbly. So let me break this down for you. That's the top of the rig there, right? Okay. And it goes down to the pulley bead, which is trapped in between two stop knots. If you just had a swivel, you'd have a swivel, two beads and two stop knots, yeah? Nice. And then, this is just one complete piece. It is strong because it's one complete piece. Because it's usually used for big game angling. And then at the end, you got a circle hook or a J-hook or whatever you fancy. This is an 8 hook. Very strong hook, very sharp. And that's what most South Africans will throw for sharks, cob, and that's it there. Except for one addition, the lead weight needs to go on it. So what makes this, this rig work in the way I'm gonna show you is, the piece of, the line that you tie the lead on must be longer than the hook snood. Yes, from the pulley bead down to the hook, it must be longer than it. It doesn't have to be especially longer, just three or four centimeters, depending on how much room you need for the bait, is to accommodate the bait, so the bait doesn't unclip when you're, when you're throwing it, because they throw some very big baits, and I do too, and that's why I adopted this type of method. So I'm gonna tie on the lead line, I suppose you call it, or the weak link. It doesn't have to be a weak link, so I'm gonna call it a lead line, for demonstration purposes. This is the figure of eight, very simple. I'll leave a link in the description for it. Figure of eight. So, oh, there we go. Cool. Lovely job. Now you've got it to that point there. That's the top of the rig. There's the pulley bead. Here's the lead line. And it just needs to be longer than the hook snoot. So I'm going to clip that off there. Boom ski. Now, you just tie it straight on to the lead or the lead link, depending on your preference. There will be no pressure on this when you cast. You'll see what I mean. So you can use a lighter lead snood, lead line, lead snood, whatever. Anyway, piece for the lead weight. Same knot again. This rig is devilishly simple and very effective, but it leaves the lead dragging, and that's the reason why I have change this slightly and incorporate it into one of the rigs that we love up this way which is the up and over rig so now you can see that the hook and the lead weight are of different lengths so this is how this rig works you take the hook south africa they throw a dingle dangle on it if it's a circle hook and if it's jays as well sometimes 
you have to allow for this. So you can see now that the snoot with the dingle dangle hair is a little bit shorter than the than the the lead. So they take that and they stick it onto the bay clip. Like so. Boom. It is an actual fact now two bay clips. The whole deal has been centralized. So it won't wobble when you cast. And which would have been the rig body is that yellow line there. Won't push the bait off the bait clip. And that's the idea behind it. So this is what it will look like when it's on the sea floor more or less. That's the lead line there. Boom. And there's the hook line there. Boom. So it's kind of like a pulley. Except without the pulley action. And that goes up to the swivel up the top up there which connects to your main line. Got me fish heads. Lovely job. This is what it looks like when it's hung up. Right, so we got the, the swivel up the top there. Then we got the pulley bead and the stop, stop knots. Then we got the, the lead line here that runs like that. Now you can see the bow I'm talking about to, to accommodate the bait that they throw then. Because bait and the rig body will throw the clip off and it will unclip when they're casting. So they, they allow this big loop in here. When it hits the water, it just unclips like that. Fish is just like a pulley or whatever. So now I'm gonna show you my interpretation of that. Okay, yeah, boom. So you open over ring rig. These are the components you're going to need to tie it. I'm gonna put them in order of where the way they're installed. So first of all, this goes at the top of the rig. It's a swivel and a relay clip for sake of argument. It's one I've made myself. I call it a relay clip because it relays the rest of the line. You know, you've seen them before. The lead link goes in the bottom of this and then you have another swivel and then you have a hook. And in between this, you have this, which is a seven or eight mil ring for assist hooks, for slow jigs or fast jigs. You can get them in most places these days or on the internet. Immensely useful in all sorts of types of ways. So, this is how it goes. First of all, you tie on to your relay clip. I'm just gonna use a figure of eight. I'm not gonna use this rig, so I'm gonna make it shorter than I usually do. So uh, it's easier to work with, with the camera. Then, whoop, you put on your pulley bead and then your last swivel. Now, the hook length goes on this. And the problem is, with this rig is, normally why you can't do this is because the rig body has to be longer than the snood when it's clipped together. Otherwise, it won't make the bow to accommodate the bait as I was explaining. And so this is how it's done. The ring is the key in this because it creates slack by shortening the hook length. You got me? Yeah, no problems. So that's it there now. Top. Pulley bead. Swivel. Now we tie on here with more 80 pound or whatever you like. Now, depending on where you put the ring, it will decide how much of a bow you get in the rig body to accommodate your bait. And that is usually a bit of messing around. So, I'm gonna cut this and tie the hook on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna snell this hook on, because that's the way circle hooks work best. If you wanna see how to do this, I'll leave a link in the description. I'm just gonna do it really quick. And what makes this way of snelling a hook on better than anything else is, because it doesn't damage the line as it goes through the eye of the hook. So it's a really good knot. I don't know what it's called or anything else. So then, you just wet it off. I pull it through. Normally, it'll get damaged as it comes through the, the back of the eye there. So that's why this way is better. As long as you don't pull it too fast. So there we go. Now, here's the important thing about circle hooks. You have to, to make them work efficiently, come in through the back of the hook, like so with the line. That's it. So then it sits like this. Yes. So when it goes into the fish's mouth, if you imagine, it goes whoop, 
you're gonna see see the way that works that's why it's so important to have it like that it will always turn that way when the fish swims off always doesn't matter what you do you put it in this way it doesn't matter it always hooks up when it's like this that's why it should be snelled from the back through to the front now we're going to tie on the the assist hook jig ring i just use the figure a again so you got that ring there and then you tie the hook onto that the whole exercise here is to keep that long snood that makes the up and over rig so effective it keeps the bait far away from the lead and all the other terminal tackle that doesn't spook the fish if you're having problems with that type of thing now if you've totally messed up you just cut it and retie it on the ring until you get it to the place you need it to be just a bit of trial and error so i just put the lead on Let's keep. let me hang it up and see how it looks this is the point where i adjust the rig so i take the light the the ring up and i put it onto the the relay up here right now you can see that the snood is just too long so it's not going to work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a piece i'm going to cut a piece off this and just make it shorter that's it so how much shorter does it need to be you take your day clip your dingle dangle hair you just run it up like this until it's like that right and so you want a bow so you're going to take a little bit more out like so yeah there's your bow and then you just cut it off where you held your finger that's it then just retie it you can measure it the other way if you want but i was just doing this for demonstration purposes so you just get the idea yeah nice so up we go onto the ring boom then we do we go down boom onto the lead there's that big bow you need for the bait everything else see no interference whatsoever with the rig body so this is it from the lead all the way up to the top there's the ring up the top that's where it connects onto the rig body so this is how it's going to fish on the sea floor there's your components for the top that goes onto your main line that's the rig body there all the way down to the lead weight and as a lot of people are familiar with it's like a running ledger and then it goes down onto the snoot there's the ring that makes the magic happen boom ski and then down to your hook length and your dingle dangle so hope you enjoyed it hope you find it useful hope it catches your fish i am billy this is billy tying rigs wherever you are in the world fish on and i'll see you on the beach bye